Hi, Richard Knutson here again, and in this session I want to talk to you about dynamic CRM on-demand workflows and about how security determines who will be able to run them and what they will be able to do. Now, an on-demand workflow is useful for automating tasks and at the same time preserving a user's discretion about when to run it. If there's an on-demand workflow you can run for a specific entity, you'll see the Run Workflow button on the Entities grid. And when you open a records form, you can see that here on this view of contact records. For on-demand workflows, though, an important and at first confusing question is, when will a user see one and be able to run it? It turns out that this is controlled by the security model, specifically by the privileges extended within a user's security role to the workflow's entity. Now, a good way to see this is to compare security roles. So, for example, let's compare the sales manager and the salesperson security roles. I'll navigate to settings, then administration, then I'll click on security roles. If I open up the sales manager security role and click on the customization tab, you can see here that for workflows, a user assigned to this role will have business unit access level for the read privilege. But what does this mean exactly? Well, it means that they'd be able to see and run any on-demand workflow that they own or one owned by any user in the same business unit. Now I'll close out the sales manager role and we'll contrast this with the salesperson security role. Now from an organizational standpoint, it makes sense that this role is a little more restrictive than the sales manager role. And you can see an example of that here. Notice that this role only extends user level read privilege for workflows. This means that if a user is only assigned to this role, they'll only be able to see and run on demand workflows that they are the owner of. Now, I'm currently signed in as a system administrator user. And I'll show you an example of how this works. Let's look at a workflow that reassigns contacts to the owner of the contact's parent account. If this is something that I don't necessarily want to require for every contact record, it's the sort of thing an on-demand workflow is good for. Now, note that I'm the owner of the workflow, and if I publish it, I can navigate to contacts and verify that it's there and available for me to run. So here's the workflow. It's published. Navigate to contacts. You can see it's here. Now I've slightly customized the active contacts view to make this more obvious. And you can see here that I've got a few contact records which are assigned to a different user than the owner of the parent account, like this one here. Suppose I want to take these contact records, currently assigned to me, say, and reassign them to Tony, who owns their parent account records. Well, I can select multiple records and then click the Run Workflow button on the toolbar. Select the workflow I want to run and run it. And after 30 seconds or so, give the workflow a chance to run. Verify that it worked as expected and reassign those contact records. Let's open one up to make sure. The contact record I ran the workflow on. Click on workflows in the details section. See that it ran. I click on the administration tab. I expect to see Tony Aliza here because he is the owner of the parent account record. So I can see it ran correctly. So let's compare that experience to what it looks like if I sign in as a different user. I've signed in here as Tony, and you can see, if I navigate to his user form, open that up, that he's assigned to the West business unit, so a different business unit than the system administrator user, and assigned to the sales manager security role. So remember that the sales manager role only has business unit read privilege on workflows, and since he's assigned to a different business unit and the owner of the workflow, we might expect different
the results. So there I am, my new Etonian. I've heard about this cool workflow and I want to use it. So I navigate to contacts and I do see the run workflow button here, but I notice that the reassign contacts workflow is not available here. This is as it should be since the workflow is currently owned by somebody in a different business unit. And I've only got business unit privileges on workflows, which means I don't see on-demand workflows owned by users in different business units. So how could a user in this situation get access to the workflow? Well, if they created it, they'd own it, and they'd certainly be able to see it in that case. But often it's somebody with a system administrator role that's doing things like creating workflows in the first place. So in our situation here, how would the system administrator make this available to Tony so he'd be able to see it here and run it? Well, the easiest way is probably to reassign it to him, which I will illustrate next after I sign back in as my system admin user. Okay, I've signed out as Tony and signed back in again as my Richard Knudsen system administrator user. And what I'll do is open the workflow and reassign it. Settings, workflow, select that workflow, and I'll assign it to Tony. And I'll be told here that it will unpublish it and the workflow will need to be published again before it will run. The workflow is now reassigned. When Tony signs in, he'll be able to publish it and then it will be available to him or run as expected. It will also still be available to me as the system administrator workflow, remember, because I have organization level read privilege on workflows. But what if I want to take this one step further and give access to this convenient on-demand workflow, not just to Tony, the sales manager, but also to the rest of the sales team in the West business unit? Remember from above that the salesperson security role only has user level access to workflows. So sharing or assigning this workflow to Tony, the sales manager, doesn't do it. Probably the easiest way to do this would be to customize the salesperson security role and change its read privilege on workflows to the business unit rather than its default user level. I'll illustrate that now by navigating to security roles and opening up the salesperson security role, click the customization tab and change the read privilege or workflow to business unit. If I do this, save those changes, and then reassign an on-demand workflow to either the sales manager or this business unit or any user assigned to this customized salesperson role, then all the other users in either role, in that business unit only, remember, will then have access to and be able to run that workflow. So this would be best for organizations with significantly different processes between business units, since access to these workflows won't cross business unit boundaries. Okay, now I'll give my best shot a succinct summary of a relatively complex topic. So the issue of who can run an on-demand workflow is determined by a combination of two factors. First is which user owns the workflow, and specifically the business unit to which that user is assigned. The second is the security role of the user who wants to run the workflow and the business unit to which they are assigned. Now, for an even more succinct summary, how about this? If you've got organizational-level read-on workflows, you can run any on-demand workflow owned by anybody in your organization. Every other situation gets a little bit more complicated. Now, one final note. We've talked about the issue of who can run an on-demand workflow, but there's also the issue of what an on-demand workflow can do. And remember, that the security role of the user running the workflow will limit the actions they can perform within the workflow. An on-demand workflow runs in the security context of the user that's running it. So if that user doesn't have permissions to do something the author of the workflow has put in the workflow, that workflow won't work. You're going to see a, a different result from that in a related session to this one on automatic workflows. So Richard Knutson signing out, and I hope you found this helpful. By the way, I've got a series of one-day training sessions I run every month called the Dynamic CRM Essential Series. And one of my favorites is the session on workflows. So if you want to learn more, you might be interested in checking those out.